Beat School on RealAirCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Joined now uh, here on RealAirCulture.com again by Rex Newkirk of uh, the Canadian International Grains Institute. And Rex, this year uh, the winter wheat crop was very hard hit by fusarium in Western yes. Canada. Uh, in terms of marketing options for, for producers, uh, there's some uh, work going on looking at sorting fusarium infected kernels uh, out of uh, out of these samples. Uh, maybe explain what uh, what the options are there. Gladly, Kelvin. Uh, yeah, this year, unbeknownst to everybody, uh, winter wheat got hit very very hard by fusarium, and um, fusarium really limits your marketing opportunities because it's a safety issue, and uh, the world can only accept so much fusarium. Uh, in the material, uh, the bomb toxin or Dawn is the name of the toxin, and so the uh, with the winter wheat market, it's it's been a challenge for volume as it is this year with so much of it being downgraded. It's difficult. So what we're doing is we're looking at uh, technologies that are available, uh, commercially produced, uh, that could be used to upgrade this year's crop. Because we know there's several million tons between the the winter wheat and the duro that are downgraded due to to fusarium, and so. The technology we're looking at is, is twofold. One is optical sorters. You're probably aware of color sorters. Now they call them optical sorters. And those machines look at uh, changes in color and they can kick out uh, kernels. And in the case of fusarium, they're often a white chalky kernel if they're really extreme. And so the, the white chalky kernels can be kicked out by an optical sorter. And they'll see that white color, kick it out. The optical sorters also look for changes in shape. And so uh, if the seed is deformed enough that it has a change in shape, it will kick those out and you can recover a fair bit of your, your grain. So we're working with some, some folks that are doing that commercially and optical sorters have been put in place across Western Canada, primarily to deal with uh, ergot. In your past, it's a black kernel versus the others. It certainly removed those quite, quite well. So that's one option we're looking at. Another one is a new technology. It's called a bow mill. And bow mills are made in Sweden and instead of looking at it from a color perspective or a shape perspective, it looks at it with NIR. And when you take your wheat into the elevator and they put it in the little machine and it gives you a protein of 12.9 or 13.5 or whatever, that's measuring it through NIR, near infrared spectrometry. And it's basically, it bounces some light off there, the molecules and the thing react with it and only let a certain amount of light back. And this gives you a measure of protein, moisture, other things, measure many things actually. Well, this sorter that we're testing, the bone mill, it looks at every seed going by on that system. And you can pick which seeds you want to take out. So if they fall outside of a certain range, they can be removed. And it's, it's a big drum. It does, I think, 3,000 seeds a second. Uh, and uh, what it does is it allows us to pull out things like uh, uh, fusarium. And so what we did is we took uh, winter wheat that uh, had various levels of infection, ranging from 3% fusarium up to 30. And we ran that through the bow mill and we would pick how much do we want to take out, how much of those outliers. So for example, 30%, the bare minimum we take out is 30. And then that 30% that we took out, probably 80% of that was heavily damaged fusarium affected kernels. But that still left some fusarium in the sorted material. So they need to keep moving that bar. And so what we were trying to look at is how much do we have to take out in order to clean up the wheat to a milling grade so now that you can sell it and to get that fusarium down. And uh, uh, we're doing that with both winter wheat and durum so that farmers can look at, do they purchase one of these things or work with somebody who has one, clean up the grain, uh, take out the fusarium and have something that they can market. So how does this uh, bull mill compare with the optical sorting? Uh, the, the optical sorters are faster and bigger and they're less costly. Uh, so with an optical sorter you can uh, they're still expensive, but not as expensive as the bone mill. You can sort through more material, but they're not as specific. So what happens is, is when you kick out the kernel you want to get rid of, uh, because of the way they're designed with the air jets, you can lose a kernel or two on either side of it, so you won't be quite as specific. So you'll maybe have, want to recover as much. Um, and also, also the optical sorters, they're looking for visual differences, and so sometimes the infection has to be fairly uh, high in order to see that, that visual difference. So I think they work very well, but they're just not quite as, as accurate and specific as a bone mill works. If you want to get down to very, very low levels of fusarium without having to throw away too much grain, 
then the bone mill fits in. But the bone mill is smaller and costs significantly more to buy. In a year like this, though, where there's a significant premium for uh, high quality Durham or, uh, or winter wheat, I guess there's going to be financial incentive for a producer to invest in those. There is, I think, especially in Durham. You know, the, there's there's just so little ones and two Durhams out there. Uh, we tested uh, some some samples from producers of Durham a couple weeks ago, uh, where we have one of these machines installed in, in North Battleford at the University of Saskatchewan, and uh, we were able to significantly reduce the dawn levels. Uh, down to less than one part per million dawn in these heavily affected samples. Uh, so for the case of the farmer who brought those samples, I think he's, if he hasn't already purchased, I believe he's going to buy you know, because now he can upgrade his wheat and then also do some of his neighbors Durham and now have a material that he can market rather than losing it all to well, what he'll sell it for is quite high in dawn. Uh, winter wheat as well, um, same, same kind of scenario. Rather than having to throw this away or find somebody to blend it off into feed, um, it'll have a marketable product. So, so I think there's lots of potential. We're, what we're doing is we're, we're holding a workshop uh, December 10th and 11th in North Battleford and everybody's welcome. They just register and it's a little fee to come. And we're going to spend the day talking about the technologies, the optical sorters, the bowl mills, how they compare, uh, the results we received from the, the samples that we ran a couple weeks ago. And then uh, in the afternoon people are going to see the machines running, see uh, you know, how they operate, and then for some people, if they want, the following day they're going to bring some small uh, optical sorter and small bowl mill. So people can bring a few kilos and they can sort their own grain. And that'll be an optional, and it'll be limited as to how many people can do that. But um, we'll open up as many as possible. We can try these things and see will it work for the grain they have that's downgraded. And then hopefully people can make some decisions about what's their best options to try to deal with this severely degraded crop. Do you see grain companies investing in this? I think so, but not necessarily uh, at the uh, not at the export terminal uh, because they're too slow. The optical sorters, yes, to the inland terminals. I think they would be able to get large enough ones that they can get the full volume because uh, I think you can get up to oh, 50 ton an hour type of units, and that's starting to get close to what they would need in these plants. The bowl mill uh, per unit is maxed out at three tons an hour. And so in order for you to get you know, 100 tons an hour or 200 tons an hour that these plants need, it would be uh, too cumbersome. But for producers, I think, or for, for companies that want to upgrade the material going into their flour mills, so flour milling companies, we know that a pasta company in Italy has bought a bunch of them because they're able to uh, not only reduce fusarium, but you can do things like increase protein content, you can increase HVK, there's things you can do to sort for. This year it's fusarium, next year it will be hopefully nothing. Hopefully next year everything's number one. That'd be best, but not always the case, right? So, uh, just looking at those technologies, but uh, I don't think grain companies themselves will buy them because of the size. They need the throughput. They need, the th they need more throughput than the optic than the bone mill can necessarily offer them. Maybe optical sorters. Yeah. So I think this is more the in the seed cleaning plants, or producers buying their own, or or companies that are say milling the product or something. Like that. This workshop again, that's December 10th at uh, December 10th. the New Feed Research Center. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out in the morning uh, at the casino, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to roll the dice, but uh, the casino, there we have a, a place where we get 100 people in and, and uh, do the seminar in the morning, have lunch, and then in the afternoon go over to the, the New uh, Feed Research Center in North Battleford. And uh, this is one of the uh, early applications of that new center that just opened a few weeks ago uh, to show these, these technologies. Uh, and then the following day, the 11th, is when we'll have the, uh, uh, the hands-on if people want to do some of their own meat. Thank you, Rex. Thank you.